Hey everyone, let's go texture us a link. Delete this light, add a light plane. Add a new material. Switch the material to a mission. In the shader editor, add a mix shader with shift A. Add a transparent shader. Turn on the node wrangler add-on and hit control T to add these nodes. Change the coordinate node to object. Select the image texture, hit shift S, change it into a gradient texture. Select quadratic sphere, turn up the emission strength. Position the plane, in object property tab, disable camera under visibility to make it invisible. The shield has these little details on it as well. I just extruded these shapes out with snapping enabled and then added a solidify modifier to give it some depth. Let's do some last minute changes before we texture. I'm going to change the belt to make it easier to weight paint. So let's select this middle inner edge loop and delete it. Select this upper edge loop and merge it at center. Then drag it to the center mirror line. Do the same on the bottom. Unwrap time. Select edges and mark them as seams with Control E. You can unwrap however you'd like, but I'll show you a montage of how I marked my seams. As I go through, I unwrap each object to check my stretching. When you get to the face, instead of marking this edge loop, maybe mark one lower, since his eyes were lower than I expected them to be. On the hands, I applied the mirror modifier, I deleted the left side, then mirrored it again just to keep them consistent with the rest of the body. I organized my UV ions a little bit, but don't worry about this part because we're going to move them all to separate textures. Here's Link's materials. I tried to come up with a good way to show all the materials I created for Link's textures, and this is it. I'll give out the hex value for each of the colors on the color ramps. The exact positions of the color ramps aren't imperative, just get them kind of close. And this is him, all colored in. I want my hat to take up less texture space, so let's delete half of it and mirror it. We're going to use one texture for all of his clothes and his hands. Select his feet, chest, belt, belt buckle, arms, hands, and hat, unwrap with you. Some of the larger but obscured faces are taking up a lot of the texture space. So pull the mostly obscured faces off the UV map, use face select to move an island without moving all connected vertices. Reselect all other islands and unwrap again. I'm going to scale down these obscured faces since I would still like color on them, but resolution doesn't matter as much. Create a new texture, make it whatever size you want. I use 2048 by 2048. Now we go through all of our body objects, adding an image node to each one of these textures with our new link body texture active. Select this node and hit Ctrl C to copy, paste it in all the other materials in the body objects. So the leg, shoe, shoe bottom, both green colors, the sleeves, skin, and belt buckle. Select these objects, go into the Render Properties tab. Under the Bake drop-down menu, change the bake type to Diffuse. Disable Direct and Indirect, change the margin to 4, hit Bake, and now we wait. Usually Blender will tell you if you have anything set up wrong. Always save your textures. When it's baked and looks good, go through and remove all the materials from your model. If a material isn't in this list on any object in your file, Blender will purge it when you close. So if you want to save any materials, hit this little shield called Fake User. Create a new material, 
Name it something that makes sense to you. Add an image texture, select the link body texture from this menu, connect the nodes up, now add this material to all the body objects. And it looks pretty good. Before we do too much more, I want to make sure his neck doesn't pop out of his head. I also made room on the texture for his hands, but didn't bake them, but no problem. In the material editor, add the body texture to the skin node group. Go back into the bake menu, disable clear image, otherwise the image will be deleted when we start baking. Hit bake and waits. Looks good. So switch the skin material to the body material on the hand, and let's make a hair texture. Select the two hair objects and unwrap them. Create a new hair material, make it whatever size you want. Make sure to rotate stuff in face select if you have sync selection enabled, otherwise you can disable your sticky selection in the drop down menu. I'm just going to move hair pieces around to get it on the texture better. You can position and scale things to your preference. Add this hair texture to your hair material. Select the two hair objects and bake. You can re-enable clear image for this part. And save your texture. Remove the hair material from the hair objects, create a new material that uses our hair texture. Select the face object and unwrap it. If you're not going to animate Link's face, you can unwrap all of these to one texture, otherwise it'd be better to have the ears, eyes, and mouth on separate textures. So I'm going to add two new material slots to the head object and add the skin material to them. Hit duplicate texture here. Rename these materials appropriately and assign them to the corresponding parts of the face. Using face select and control L will allow you to select a single island for assigning materials. Create some new textures, make them whatever size you want, I use 256 by 256 for these. Now unwrap your ears, eyes, and mouth individually so that they take up more of the texture space. Add the correct texture to each material. With the head object selected, hit bake and wait. When it's done, go through the three new textures and save them. Connect these texture nodes to the material nodes in each of the skin materials, and it looks good. I went back and changed the gradient slightly on the materials so that there was more shading on the face and rebaked it. So change stuff around as much as you want. Disable the hair object so we can see the entire head. Switch into texture paint mode and the image editor. Select the ear texture from this drop down menu and change view to paint. In the tool properties tab, we have all the brush options. You can change your texturing tool over here. I'm going to choose a random darker skin tone color. In material view, paint on some ear. Use whatever option you're most comfortable with for painting. I used a lower brush strength and just layered in some colors and then blend them all together with the blur tool. Remember, you can always adjust your brush size with F. Also remember to save any changes that you like. Otherwise, they're gone. I want to draw in his fingers. In object mode, select the hand object and go back into texture paint mode. Switch the stroke method to line and draw in some fingers. Save your textures constantly. Time to paint the face. I'm going to use this brown color for the mouth. Switch back to space. Select the head object in object mode and go back into texture paint mode. I'm going to open the mouth texture down here as well. Sample skin colors off the texture directly. Since your skin has shading, you have to be a little bit more careful when you're painting. If you want to use layers like in Photoshop, you'll have to use multiple textures and set it up in the material with nodes. I'm just going to eyeball in the locations of everything. Feel free to line up a reference behind your model if you're more comfortable with that. Then I kind of blur everything together to make the edges a little less rough. Oh yes, and save your textures. I think that looks pretty good. The shield's material is set up a little differently, so I'll show you how to deal with that. We're already using a UV map for the blue texture on the shield, so how do we bake this to a texture? First of all, mark seams however you want. Don't unwrap with U at this point, however. If you do, make sure not to unwrap the faces with the blue material color. Somehow, I didn't have my scale applied to the shield details, so once I applied them, I had to change the thickness of the solidify modifier. If you prefer to, you could just texture on these details. 
Go into the base shield object, and in the object data properties tab under the UV maps, add another UV map. Click the camera to activate it. In object mode, select all the shield objects, tab into edit mode, and select all the faces for each object with A. Unwrap them with U. You'll see that our shield's blue color now looks messed up, but it's fine. If we select the shield object and click the camera by the first UV map, you can see the original coloring is safe. Switch back to the second UV map. In the material editor, make sure the blue shield color is selected. Hit Shift A, and under Input, select the UV map node. Connect the UV output to the vector input of the mapping node. And in this field, select UV map. Now we're using the gradient blue texture from the first UV map. This means we can bake all of our textures correctly onto the second UV map. Before you bake the shield, make sure to create a new image texture and add a node with it active into each of the shield materials. I use 1024 by 1024 as the resolution. Temporarily turn your shield gray material to non-metallic, then bake. Once everything is baked, you can re-slide your metallic bar to 1 on the gray material. Go through stripping all the materials off the shield object, create a new material for the shield object, add the shield texture, and connect it. Some of the faces are going to be metallic and some not. So create a second shield material, have one set to 1 in metallic and the other set to 0. Now assign the non-metallic material to everything colored and the metallic material to the gray parts. I had my shield yellow color have ambient occlusion, but something didn't work well in the bake, so I took it off and used the yellow color to rebake it. And there it is! You can unwrap the sword the same way, just disable any metallic or transparent materials as you go. Also you can see here, I have a round gem. The main last thing to do is give him a fancy v-neck tunic. First, I want to fix how his neck looks. Disable the visibility of any objects that are in the way. In edit mode, pull up this top loop. Select these two vertices and duplicate them with Shift D, hit F to make an edge. Switch pivot point to active element and transform orientation to normal. Select the top neck edge loop and shift select this new edge last. Scale by zero on the Z axis, delete the new edge and switch your transform and pivot point back. Make his neck skin colored, and give him a V-neck tunic, and spend way too much time on it, since everyone is going to see his neck under his giant head in a top-down view game. Save the image, and there you have it. He's all textured up. You can add whatever other details you want at this point. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Next time we're going to rig Link, and whew, his weight painting. Get prepared for that. Okay, love you, bye.